Hello, my name is Doug Ebel. I'm going to be presenting TD Bench to you. I did my first data warehouse in 1975. The source data for that data warehouse is now sitting as a lamp in the corner of my office, made up of 11, 23, 14 disk packs, about 200 megabytes. In 1985, I did my first competitive benchmark between IBM, Oracle, and Teradata. And in 1995, I joined Teradata. In 2008, I joined the group that does benchmarks for a living within Teradata. There were three things I found out fairly quickly that were needed during a benchmark. One is the ability to accurately represent or simulate the customer's workload. Second, the ability to quickly analyze test data after the test is over to make sure it was successful. And finally, some ability to organize the mass of data that's generated during a benchmark. The first release of TD Bench was written under Windows while I was sitting around waiting for a customer to provide me data. In 2010, I was at a customer site and the DBA saw the tool and asked if he could use it. And pretty soon he was running tests left and right. He had been the president of Partners, our user group, and asked if I would present it at Partners. And I did and published it on our developer exchange. The next two releases of TD Bench were written under Linux using bash shell scripts. This enabled benchmark analysts to be able to run against the same copy of the application with the same scripts and, and work much more cooperatively. The performance is also a lot better. In 2017, a good friend of mine and close associate, um, Al Laser, rewrote the application in Java. I picked up that application and have continued to make changes to it. Since TD Bench is written in Java, it can execute on either Windows or Linux. TD Bench supports tests against any data source that supports JDBC. So far, we've used it in benchmarks or tested it with the DBMSs you see here. It can execute SQL statements from a queue or invoke programs like data load utilities or BI tools. There are a variable number of workers attached to each queue to execute that part of the workload. You can have multiple queues simulating different types of workload or user groups. The query driver supports parameterized queries, prepared queries, scheduled execution of queries, for example, replay of a production schedule, or pace arrival of queries to simulate expected arrival rate of queries in a proof of concept. The entire test or specific queues within a test can be fixed period or fixed work. The test can be set up and run interactively, or they can be run in batch mode, one at a time, or running a set of tests. The commands to set up a test are simple. A defined statement provides the name of the test and a title. The queue statement says what queries to put in the queue. That can be a file name containing one or more queries, a search pattern as you see here for a directory, or you can put a short SQL statement right on the queue statement, ending it with a semicolon. The worker statement says what database alias should be used for the queue and how many workers should be created, which defaults to one. The run statement by itself will execute all the queries one time and then stop. This is a fixed work test. Test two will run the contents of Q1 continuously for 30 minutes using five workers and then stop submitting queries. This is known as a fixed period test. Test 3 has a more meaningful queue name and adds a second queue for submitting load scripts five minutes into the test. We only want the queue with the data load to execute one time, so we put a stop.me command in the queue. If we only queued a stop command without the .me, it would have stopped the entire test when the load was complete. The queries queue is a fixed period test since it will run 30 minutes and the load queue would be a fixed work test since it will only execute once. One of the key features of all previous TD Bench releases has been the reporting capability, but those releases only worked with Teradata. Since TD Bench 8 works with any JDBC data source, we embedded a database inside TD Bench to collect test results. 
After a test is complete, you can list all or a subset of the run IDs based on a number or a SQL constraint. There are three tables. Test tracking has one line per test. Test tracking log contains all input lines and messages from the test. And test results contains one line for every OS or a query that was executed during the test. The final example shows a select against one of the reporting views to summarize the query execution by run ID and queue that were labeled as final. You can then use the note command to document the conditions of prior tests or mark selected ones as final. You can use the archive statements to select tests using SQL constraints and merge into a set of three tables prefixed by some word like a vendor name. Those can then be dumped which exports the data as CSV and zips the three files into a single file. They can be mailed to a benchmark coordinator for integration using the restore commands. You can then run queries against a set of archived results in the same way you can query the standard results. The benchmark coordinator then can use a simple query to consolidate results across vendors. There are four standard reporting views. When you archive or restore a set of tests, a set of reporting views will be created that go along with that archive. You can either reference the archive recording views directly or use a union query to bring the results together into a single set of data. The ability to run queries on the host DBMS is still supported with TDBench 8.0. You can define one or more statements to be executed before or after the run statement. We have distributed such linkages for Teradata, but they can easily be created for other vendor database DBMSs. The test start macro passes a test name and description to the host DBMS along with the TDBench generated run ID. This should insert a new row into the DBMS test tracking table with the DBMS current timestamp. When the test stop executes, it should either update the most recent row in the host DBMS test tracking table or use the TDBench generated run ID. You can then create reporting views that join the test tracking table to query logging and resource usage table. Those are currently being provided with Teradata. So where do you get the software? You can download TDBench from downloads.teradata.com. When you select to download TDBench, you may be asked to register. The only use of the registration is for statistics to justify development effort and occasionally for me to notify of new releases. Just put the zip in a directory on the server or PC where you want it to run and unzip it. Read the readme.txt file. It will guide you on getting JDBC drivers for other databases and customizing the startup file tdbench.cmd. That file can define the JDBC drivers for your server and define a database alias. Run tdbench.sh for Linux or tdbench.bat for Windows. The first time you run, additional files will be put into the directory and an introduction will be displayed. At this point, you can use the help command to explore tdbench. You could try to execute the class statement to define your database's JDBC driver and DB statement to provide a database alias interactively, but that will only last for the current session. I suggest exiting and updating the tdbench.cmd file. That has commented out lines that you can uncomment and edit. When you set all that up, start up tdbench and try a simple SQL statement to validate your connection. Then try a simple test putting a single query into a queue and running it. For more information, go to downloads.teradata.com. There you'll find JDBC drivers and a link to the TDBench for any database page. On that page, you'll find the current release of the TDBench software, the current TDBench user guide, a trifold command reference with all of the commands, instruction videos, and how to get answers to questions, to contribute content, or to report bugs. Thank you.